This video is about sound for clinical neurophysiologists. It is intended for the Nick Cloud Children's Hospital Clinical Neurophysiology Fellows. The first section of this talk will be conducted in a conversational format. The second section will be conducted in a question and answer format. The conversational section will be divided in four segments. The first segment is about definitions. The second segment is about the story of 0 dB. The third segment is about the story of the audiogram relevant to the clinical neurophysiologist. And the fourth segment will deal with practical issues. So let's start with definitions. Sounds refers to the change in particle displacement within an elastic medium leading to stimulation of the hearing cells. Here we are representing in this drawing the medium as air and the blue dots represent particles going from many to few and from few to many. The displacement of the particles ultimately produce pressure fluctuations at the tympanic membrane. Those sound can be represented as waves. The top of the wave indicated the many particles being displaced. The bottom indicating the few particles being displaced. Sound has loudness. Loudness is measured using dBs. Sounds also have pitch. Pitch is a function of frequency and it is measured in hertz, which as you know means cycle per second. I will first address loudness, which as we mentioned before is measured in dBs. dB is a funny unit especially when used to quantitate sound. I will tell you four reasons for saying that dB is a phony unit. The first reason is that dB is a logarithmic unit that incorporates a ratio of two sounds. The second is that dB is not linear. An increase in 20 dB from 80 to 100 dB is not equal to an increase of 20 dB from 120 to 140 dB. If we look at the scale I have placed in this frame and compare dB as it relates to sound to Pascal as it relates to pressure at the tympanic membrane using 20 micropascal, we will have an equivalent of 0 dB. You can see that from 40 to 60, the dB increases corresponds to a very small number. But from 80 to 100, the 20 dB increase corresponds to a much higher number in this case to 1.8 pascals and from 120 to 140 the 20 dB increase corresponds to 180 pascals. So dB are not linear as you can see from the preceding explanation. The third reason I think dB is a funny unit is that dB is a relative measure. 0 dB does not indicate the absence of sound. Notice that 0 dB by convention corresponds to a pressure of, uh, of 20 micropascals. So since 20 micropascal is the unit of reference, 
a sound that creates a pressure of 20 micropascal corresponds to 0 dB. The fourth reason I think dB is a funny unit is that it is expressed different in different reference levels. This last characteristic, in addition to making dB funny, makes it very confusing, at least for me. I will expand on the relation between the dBs and the different reference level in the next few frames. dB reference level relates to physical and behavioral parameters. The two physical parameters are straightforward. One is intensity. Intensity as a dB reference level is not often used by most neurologists. The other physical parameter used for dB is reference level is pressure. Pressure is usually referred as sound pressure level and not just as pressure. dB sound pressure level is the reference level most neurologists use. The behavioral parameters are referred to as hearing level and sensory level. I will now address each of these references levels regarding the formula or the way used to obtain them, the usual unit used to measure them, and what 0 dB means in relation to the different reference levels. The formula for intensity is expressed as dB intensity level or IL. IL is equal to 10 times the logarithm of the ratio of the intensity of the sound output to the intensity of the reference of the sound. The usual unit is 10 to the negative 12 power watts per square meter or picowatts per square meter. Zero dB sound intensity level does correspond to a 1 picowatt per meter square. When the dB reference level is pressure, we refer to it as sound pressure level as we previously mentioned. This unit is abbreviated as dB SPL and is represented by the formula as follows. dB SPL is equal to 20 times the logarithm of the ratio of the pressure output to the pressure reference. Later on in this talk, I will explain why the 20 is used in the pressure equation and not the 10 as it is used in the intensity equation. For now, I want to continue the flow of the explanation, so we will go on with the next unit for sound pressure level. The usual unit for sound pressure level is the micropascal. And 0 dB corresponds to 20 micropascal. The third type of reference level and the first reference level using behavioral responses is called hearing level. This is a confusing unit because it is used in different ways by different people. The way it is determined is by actually testing a group of people by an organization. Thus, a significant amount of years are tested by the testing organization. Most organizations use pure tones lasting for at least 0 0.5 microseconds to do the testing. The usual unit is called dBHL. This unit, in reality, is a modified offshoot of the dBSPL, as we will see later on in this talk. Hearing level does define corresponds to the average of the least loud pure tone that many normal ears perceive 50% of the time during perfect testing situations. The testing is done by an organization, as I previously mentioned, 
the organization can be governmental or otherwise, and this organization selects the people to be tested, the specific frequencies to be used, the type of equipment to be used, and then comes out with values that are usually represented and published in tables. You can imagine, given the many variables, that the values given by the different organizations hardly ever coincide, and that even the same organization from one time to another comes out with different values. If this would not be confusing enough, the meaning of 0 dB adds to, the, to this confusion, as you will see. One of these organizations that uses the relation between hearing level and pressure gave the following values. When tone of 100 Hz are used, 0 dB corresponds to 200 micropascals, SPL. When pure tones of 200 Hz are used, 0 dB corresponds to 70 micropascal SPL. When pure tones of 1000 Hz are used, 0 dB corresponds to 20 micropascals. When pure tones of 2000 Hz are used, 0 dB corresponds to 30 micropascal. And when pure tones of 4000 Hz are used, 0 dB corresponds to 80 micropascals SPL. Yet other organizations have correlated 0 dB to the number of dB SPL needed to equate it to 0 dB at the different frequencies. The values in this table introduced in this frame were obtained using uh, a microphone des uh, designated TDH-49 and TDH-50. This table is from the adjacent book that you see in this frame. From another organization, I have put this new table. Notice that the values are slightly different and that there are other tables with values that are much different than the one that I have just shown. To further confuse this issue, the DBHL abbreviation has some time received an N. The letter N has been added in front of HL, as I have done in this frame. And in those cases, then, the organization and the sound used for the testing is different. The organizations are the lab of the neurophysiologist conducting the test, or at times, the labs of the manufacturers creating the machine. And instead of using pure tones, they use clicks. Now I will go back to show you this unit as I first introduced it to you in relation to Pascals. So this is it. I will now move to the next type of dB reference level. The fourth and last dB reference level is called the sensory level. Sensory level is determined at the lab at the time of the exam is being done and uses clicks. The explanation about the difference between tones and click will be forthcoming, but for now, just know that it makes a difference whether one or the other one is used. The usual unit for sensory level is basically called the DBSL. And 0 dB means the least intensity at which an individual ear can perceive a click 50% of the time. So, as you can imagine, 0 dB will vary from ear to ear. So, we have now talked about loudness. Now, I would like to say a few things about pitch. Do not worry, pitch is much 
less confusing than loudness. Pitch, as you know, is measured in hertz. Pitch can be tested using pure tones. This implies that only one frequency of a given amplitude is used for the testing. It can also be tested using tones. A tone is a sound that contains a relatively thin bandwidth of equal amplitude. Pure tone and tones are mainly used by ear, nose and throat doctors. Neurologists tend to use clicks. Neurologists use click because click represents a sound with a wide bandwidth and having a big range of frequency of equal average amplitude or unequal amplitude. Another sound used by neurologists is the shrimp. Shrimp consists of a sound that staggers different frequencies to compensate for their different arrival time at the cochlea. As you recall, the cochlea perceives different frequencies at different portions of the basal membrane. The high frequency sounds that is from 20,000 to 1,500 hertz are perceived at the entrance or the base of the cochlea. The medium frequency sounds from 1,500 to 600 hertz in the middle section of the cochlea and the low frequency sound from 600 to 200 hertz at the apex or close to it. So with trips the arrival of most frequencies is synchronized. With clips, that is what most often the neurologists use, the arrival is not synchronized. High frequency sounds stimulate the cochlear ne neurons before the low frequency sounds do. Notice that under the trip, the first clock has time zero, but the other one indicates over three milliseconds. Now notice that under the clip the clock only has one time, that is time zero. This frame shows the mechanics of it. With trip, low frequency sounds are emitted before high frequency sounds. This result theoretically on simultaneous stimulation of the whole basilar membrane thus creating a more robust brain evoke response. In this frame, I have first introduced a brain evoke potential study done using clips. And in this one, I have added the panel corresponding to SHRIP. That is when the test was done using SHRIP with the same parameters as it was done when clicks were used. And as you can notice, the peak to wave 5 has a much higher amplitude when strips are used. In addition, both ear, nose and throat and neurologists tend to use white noise. White noise is a sound that contains all frequencies of the human audible spectrum at average equal amplitude. This is used to block the ear not being tested from activation by the test sound in the contralateral ear. This concludes the first segment of the conversational section. The next segment, the next segment of the conversational section tells a story of 0 dB. I like to start this segment with a quote. A wise man once said that it is tough to make predictions especially about the future. 
trying to develop a cohesive narrative about zero dB made me add on to that statement, but not as tough as to understand history, especially about the past. You will see what I mean in the next few minutes. I will divide the story of dB in three tales. The tale of the first modern instrument to measure sound, the tale about the creation of the hearing threshold curves, and the third tale will be about adjusting 0 dB to the hearing threshold at all frequencies. So let's start talking about the birth of the modern instrument used to measure sound level. A good point to start this tale is with the engineers at Western Electric Company in 1920. These engineers created an instrument called audiometer. The audiometer has three main components. It has a click to indicate when a sound is first heard when going from softer to louder sounds or when to indicate when the sound is no longer heard when going from louder to softer sounds. In addition to a clicker, the audiometer has earphones. One of the speakers emit a pure tone. That is the, spe the speaker used for the testing. While the other speaker emits white noise. The third component of the audiometer is the instrument itself. The instrument has a dial to control frequency with a range from 125 Hertz to 8000 Hertz and another dial to control loudness that uses dB. The interplay of these two dials is important because sound pressure independent of frequency or we can say it the other way around frequency independent of sound pressure does not have a good correlation with hearing. I will give you two examples. In the first example we will look at the ability to perceive sounds. A sound of 30 micropascal at 100 Hertz which corresponds in the Pascal frequency graph to the dot I have just placed, is heard by most normal hearing people. But 30 micropascals with the frequency of 100 Hertz, which corresponds to the aqua dot in the graph, is not heard by most people. The second example deals with relative loudness. A 0.2 Pascal 100 Hz tone is heard just as loud as a 30 micropascal 1000 Hz tone. It was this discrepancy, the actual hearing on one hand and loudness and pitch on the other hand that drove the Westinghouse engineers to modify the Pascal frequency graph in order to integrate human hearing thresholds and to create the threshold curves. I am going to address the tale of this feat of human in ingenuity by telling you the five steps they took to create the threshold curve. The first step was testing the employees with good hearing to determine the threshold at different frequencies. The second step was to determine the softest sound that could be heard and at what frequency it was heard by the tested employees. The third step was incorporating dB scale to the pre-existing Pascal frequency graph with 0 dB 
equal to 20 micropascals. The fourth step was adjusting the Pascal scale to the dB scale. And the fifth step was drawing a line joining thresholds of sound at different frequencies in the graph. I will now explain the first step. So during the first step, the chosen employees with good hearing sat to have each ear tested with pure tones of different frequencies. The first sound tested was a pure tone of 10 hertz to the right ear while white noise was being applied to the left ear. And it took 19,999 micropascal for the individual to perceive the sound 50% of the time it was presented. The same protocol was followed for now testing the left ear. And it took 20,001 micropascal to first hear the sound at least 50% of the time. Next, they use 100 Hertz pure tone. The right ear lowest sound perceived 50% of the time had an intensity of 201 micropascal. The left ear lowest sound heard following the same protocol was 199 micropascals. Then the ears were tested using 200 hertz tone. The right ear lowest hertz sound was 100 micropascal. The left was 50 micropascal. The left and the right ear were tested separately. They were tested using a 400 hertz tone following the same protocols and the softest sound heard with the right ear was 90 and with the left ear 30. Then the test was conducted using 1000 hertz tone, then 2000, then 3000, then 4000, then 6000, and finally 8000 hertz. Each time the lowest sound heard at least 50% of the time with each ear was tabulated. Then the same procedure was done with the second employee, then the third, and this was done in about 20 employees. Then they added each column corresponding to each frequency tabulated and divided them by 40 the number of ears. So they established the lowest sound that was heard at the different frequencies. In this frame, you can see that I have superimposed a new table with these values. Once they had found the average of the softest sound of their chosen employees, for each tested frequency, they took the second step. The second step was to determine the softest sound that could be heard and at what frequency it was heard. So they looked at the table they had just created and determined that the softest sound that could be heard was 20 micropascals at 1000 Hertz. Once this was done, the next step was to incorporate the dB scale to the pre-existing Pascal frequency graph with 0 dB corresponding to 20 micropascals. This is the pre-existing Pascal frequency graph that I just mentioned. It is called the way it is because of obvious reason. It relates Pascals, a unit of pressure, with hertz the unit of frequency. The dB scale was added in the y-axis at the beginning of the graph, as you can see here, labeled 
and the actual values were introduced as I have done in this frame. This scale was ordered correlating 20 micropascal, the softest sound heard at 1000 hertz frequency in this group to 0 dB. Once the third step was taken, the next step was to adjust the Pascal scale to fit the dB scale. So they took the Pascal scale that was initially arranged mainly using the system of 10 to the values corresponding to the dB which came out to be a system with 2 as the pre prevalent number as you can see in this frame. Once this step was taken, they took the last step which was to draw a line joining the different threshold of sounds at different frequencies. This was done by incorporating the average of the values representing the first sound heard at least 50% of the time by their employees at different frequencies to the graph. The frequencies used are indicated by the arrows on top of the graph as well as the appropriate coordinates are now introduced in the chart. You can see now that in addition I have placed the dots on the coordinates and now a line joining these dots, thus the threshold curve was born. In this frame I have removed the arrows that were on the top of the graph and also some of the points belonging to the extreme frequencies. I have done this for very vis visual better visualization of the numbers. I hope you also realize that the tale I have just told you relates to the birth of dB sound pressure level as a unit because it correlated dB with Pascals. Now I will tell you about the third tale. This tale is about adjusting 0 dB to be the threshold for all frequencies. This was the last graph that I show you. In this frame, as you can see, I have removed most of the graph except for the line indicating the frequencies and the dashed line going from 0 dB to 20 micropascals. I have now drawn a horizontal line that I have labeled 0 dB to represent the original 0 dB line as indicated by the white arrow. And I have also inverted the scale. So now up means less and down means more. Finally, I have moved the values to the newly created 0 dB line. I hope you also realize that the tale I have just told you relates to the birth of the hearing level as a unit. So now that we know the tale of the first modern instrument to measure sounds, the tale about the creation of the hearing threshold curve, and the tale of how the threshold of all frequencies were adjusted to 0 dB, we can say that we have concluded the second segment of the conversational section. And we are ready to start telling the story of the audiogram relevant to clinical neurophysiologists. As you recall, this was the last figure I show you regarding the story of 0 dB. In this frame, I have removed the Pascal values because now that we have a asserted 0 dB to be the unit of hearing level, the Pascal value are not necessary to re represent who can and who cannot hear well. Those that can hear better than average, indicated from 0 dB to minus 10, would have no problems with activity of daily living, since they hear better than most. But it was also 
appreciated that those that could only hear sounds a hundred times louder could also function normally. That is, if a person could only hear a sound that was a hundred times louder, they could also function normally. And this is expressed using the V's as plus 20. So once the normal hearing was defined, the abnormal hearing followed with all its degree, as you can see in this frame. And thus the audiogram was born. Currently, it is stipulated, as I just previously stated, that an ear has normal hearing range if the ear can hear sound softer than the average softest sound heard by the Western Electric Company employees, as well as if the softest sound that they can hear is only 10 times louder than the average lowest sound heard by the Western Electric Company employees, which, as you recall, was 20 dB SPL. The rest, those ears that can only hear a sound if the intensity is louder than a hundred times the average softest sound heard by the Western Electric Company employees would have several degrees of hearing loss. The beauty of this audiogram is its simplicity. This concludes the story of the audiogram and I will begin with the fourth and last segment of this conversational section. This segment is about practical consideration. I will address this segment by showing you extras from books that I consider classic and pointing out certain things about them. Please stop the video and take a few minutes to read these two paragraphs. Notice the description used to define hearing level. It is unclear to me who does the testing for the standards. It is clear that pure tones were used and that the duration was 0 0.5 milliseconds. Also notice that the term NHL, it seemed to me, to indicate that the sound used was broadband click for short duration and not pure tones of 0 0.5 milliseconds as it was used when the N was not included in the HL. Sound level is considered for a given patient. I have always considered that in sound level, which is SL, it refers to hearing threshold of each ear, so a patient can have a sensory level of plus 20 dB in the right ear and plus 50 dB in the left ear. As far as I can tell, the terms dB NHL and NHL are also not clear. Please take a few uh, seconds to read uh, these paragraphs and see what you think. I find the terminology and definitions in Levin and Luders to be clearer. I think that the definition of SL, sensory level, is correct. It stresses that it is for individual ears. In the definition for DBHL, it's hard to tell if it refers to those given by an organization or those obtained in the lab doing the study. Regarding PESPL, it seems to me, from my interpretation of what I am reading, that it, it is measured by matching the amplitude of the click to the amplitude of pure tones and then measuring the tone using a sound meter. The lines that I, I have highlighted, I think that is a typo because 100 hertz is not the frequency with the lowest threshold in humans. In a Spellman evoke potential primer, it is said 
that the pure tone should last at least 0 0.5 seconds. Uh, I do not know if they are referring to the same uh, the same thing as it was being referred in Ebersol and the numbers are just messed up or they are talking about something different. In this book, NHL is here to set to be defined by the manufacturer or by the lab using the equipment. PESPL is measured by peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of the click matched with pure tone, but does not say how the pure tone is measured. So, in the midst of all these differences and often conflicting information, I humbly have created a chart that summarizes the way I understand these concepts to be. This chart is the one you see here. There are three methods of establishing the controls. So, we know how many at least have an idea of how many dBs we are using to provoke a brainstem potential. Sensory level is when you establish the threshold for each ear before you begin testing them. This is done with your own machine using clicks. You simply increase the loudness of the click by about 5 dB at a time and then when the patient says that he or she hears the sound, you make that number 0 dB and then you add the amount of dB PESPL you want to give. NHL means that you have done your own controls using clicks at your own lab or what is currently more frequent, the manufacturer has established already the controls and they come already set at the machine. In this case, so if you, if the NHL is done in your office, you have an idea of how, what is the dB of each patient. It is important that if you do it in your office that you match uh, the controls with the age of the patient, especially if you do pediatrics. So if your control is 30 dB PESPL and you want to stimulate the ear with 60 dB SPL, you set your machine for an outgoing click of 90 dB PESPL. Hearing level without the end that or just the HL is when you use the standards created by other people, usually an organization based on result of pure tone testing, not related to clicks. So you give a dB in the form of clicks that corresponds to an equivalent dB in the form of pure tone. If you're not clear about all this, do not lose heart. It is because I myself am not very clear about it because of the literature is so confusing and different books say different things. So regarding the method of quantitating dB, it is always related to sound pressure level. You can measure the click by measuring the tallest wave of the click, either from peak to peak or from base to peak. Or you can use peak equivalent sound pressure level. This is done by comparing the root mean square of the peak to peak amplitude of the highest wave in the click with the root mean square of the peak to peak amplitude of a continuous 1000 Hz pure tone. Once these two amplitudes are matched, that is the, the amplitude of the click and the amplitude of the pure tone, then you go ahead and use a sound meter to measure the pure tone. Three more practical points I would like to make before leaving this conversational uh, section. One is that Clinical Neurophysiology Society recommends that all units to be reported in DBPESPL. The second is that most reproducible 
brain auditory evoke responses waves are obtained in normal people in ideal condition with click intensity of about 100 dB PESPL. And the third is that contralateral ear should be masked by white noise and that the Academy recommends 60 dB SPL to be the intensity of the noise, that is the sound pressure of the, of the noise. In the guidelines, there's no mention of PE before the SPL for this parameter. So we have finished the conversational section and we will start the question and answer section. The unit in, of intensity for sound is decibel, A true, B false. The decibel is a unit of measurement used to express the ratio of one value of a physical property to another on a logarithmic scale. It was named in honor of Alexander Graham Bell. The sound intensity level in decibel is defined as 10 times the logarithm of 10 of the ratio of the intensity of the sound of interest or output sound to the intensity of a refer reference sound. So the answer to this question is a. Next question. Acoustic intensity can be measured using pressure as a unit. A true, B false. Acoustic intensity can be measured as a pressure because intensity of sound is proportional to the square of its pressure at a given medium. Notice that pressure is abbreviated by using the letter P, which I have made it aqua in this frame. The factors determining the value of the medium are density of the medium represented by an italic P in magenta and the speed of sound. Remember that pressure is the reference level most often used for sound and not intensity. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. dB can be defined as, as 10 log P1 dash P2, where P1 is the pressure of sound to be measured and P2 is the pressure of a reference sound. A true, B false. I will answer this question by describing four general steps and then going to specifics. Recall that intensity can be converted to pressure as we have just mentioned. So an equation can be created between the pressure in of interest and the reference pressure eliminating intensity, which then can be rearranged as you can see in this frame to find a relation. And further simplify as shown in this fourth step. Now I will proceed with the specific steps. Recall that the sound intensity level in decibel is defined as 10 times the logarithm of 10 of the ratio of the intensity of the sound wave of interest to the intensity of the reference sound wave. And since intensity can be substituted by pressure to the second power, as you know, we can produce a new equation. This equation can be further simplified as indicated in this frame. I hope this explained to you why when pressure is used, the logarithm value is 20 and when intensity is used, the logarithm value is 10. In both cases, the base of the logarithm is 10. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. The lowest dB that human can hear is at dash hertz. A 100, B 3000, C 1000, D 10,000. As you recall, when I told you the tale about the creation of the hearing threshold curve, the lowest sound heard 
by their employees, that is the employees of the of the company when they were creating the chart, was 20 micropascals. And it was heard at 100 hertz. This was what the engineers of the Westinghouse company believed back then. But apparently they were wrong. The current threshold curve does not look like this. But like you see now, indicating that the softest sound that can be heard by humans is minus 10 dB in that the best frequency that it can be heard is at 3000 Hertz. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. The preferred physical unit for sound is micropascal. A true, B false. To answer this question, I will go back to the terminology used in Levine and Luther's book. I have now highlighted the word micropascal and now the words dyne per square centimeters. Both units can be used to represent pressure. The reason for the existence of the two units is that there are two systems that can be used to represent pressure. One is called the centimeter gram second system. Among the units in the system, you can you have one that deals with force that can be used for pressure. This unit is called the dyne. The dyne is a unit of force that does not incorporate area. And since the definition of sound intensity is force applied to an area, to use this unit, we need to add a unit of area. So to define the intensity of sound using this system, we need to use the expression dyne per square centimeter. The other system of units is called the international system. The system has even more units, as you can see. And among them, one combines force and area, which is called Pascal. One Pascal is the pressure exert exerted by a force of one Newton perpendicularly upon an area of one square meter. So the Pascal can be used to quantitate the pressure of sound and since it is a big unit, instead of using Pascal, we use micropascals. And in both cases, we add the postfix sound pressure level to make sure that it is understood that we're dealing with sound pressure level. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. Sound only exists in certain areas of the central nervous system. A true, B false. I usually think of the hearing apparatus as a transducer that converts sound to electricity. Yet it would be far more accurate to scratch the word sound and instead use the word pressure and attach the symbol of sound after electricity, as I have done in this frame. Thus, we should think of sound not as the conversion of sound to electricity, but as the conversion of pressure to sound. This is so because sound is our interpretation of the electrical activation of certain areas of the central nervous system. The diagram I have just introduced below depicts the structures that constitute the auditory apparatus. In this frame, I have added the representation of airwaves. 
the pressure variations transmitted through the air enter through the external auditory meatus and reaches the tympanic membrane, producing a back and forth movement of the tympanic membrane. So here we have air pressure converted to motion. From the tympanic membrane, motion is transmitted through the middle ear bones. The motion is then transmitted to the membrane of the oval window and then from the oval window it causes waves of liquid in the inner ear. The wave of the perilymph and ultimately of the endolymph produces ripples in the basilar membrane. This ripple induces the hair cells that rest on the basilar membrane of the organ of corti to move and the creation of potentials in the way of action nerve potentials, thus transforming motion into electricity. This electrical potential then travel in the eighth cranial nerve, entering the cranial vault through the internal auditory meatus, reaching the brain stem, then the thalamus, and ultimately arriving to the auditory cortex. At the auditory cortex, electrical activity is converted to what we perceive as sound. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. Click intensity should be calibrated in A. Decibel peak equivalent sound pressure levels DB, PE, SPL B. Decibels above normal hearing level DBHL C. Decibel above the subject's individual hearing threshold in the ear tested DBSL D. Decibel peak sound pressure level The guidelines recommend that the click intensity be acoustically calibrated in decibels peak equivalent sound pressure levels. I hope you remember this chart. It has an arm labeled method used to quantitate dB. This arm itself has two other arms indicating two ways of calibrating dBs. One way is called peak sound pressure level. This is obtained by measuring the amplitude of the largest wave in the click, either peak to peak or base to peak. The units obtained cannot be used to be correlated with pure tone sound pressure levels. Pure tone sound pressure levels are those determined by the Westinghouse engineers that I presented to you in the graph. The other arm, called peak equivalent sound pressure level, can be used to correlate clicks with pure tones. In this frame, I have listed the two calibration methods I just mentioned and now added a third method. This method is hardly used, but I mention it just so you uh, are aware that of its existence. It is called SPL1MS. It was reported to be more accurate than the PESPL method to convert the actual pressure of the click to pure tone pressure. I think that this paragraph now in Aqua explains how it is obtained, uh, but I am not 100% certain that was the way that it was done, but you might as well read it. So the answer to this question is, a. Next question. Peak equivalent sound pressure level is arrived by comparing the peak to peak amplitude of the highest wave in the click to the peak to peak amplitude of pure tone with a known root mean square pressure. 
a true, b false. Here I am reintroducing the table I show you in the previous section. It, it is regarding the basic units used to measure click. In the next few frames I will talk to you about the different methods of measuring click. These methods are peak to peak calibration, base to peak calibration, peak equivalent calibration, and now what I will do, I will talk to you about each of this. You can see in this frame click A, and here you can see click B. You can also see presented in this frame a continuous pure tone label C. The peak to peak amplitudes are the same for all three waves. The peak sound pressure level is estimated in click A and B by measuring from the waveform baseline to the peak of the maximal deflection and in the continuous pure tone by measuring from the midline to the peak. As you can see, the estimated values are different in the three waves. The third method of calibrating dB, the one preferred by the Academy, is peak equivalent sound pressure level, usually referring to peak to peak equivalent sound pressure level. This unit is established by matching the peak to peak amplitude of a pure tone to the peak to peak amplitude of a click in question and then determining the mean square root of the pure tone. In this way we can determine the force content of the pure tone which will be the same or about the same as the energy content of the click. So the answer to this question is Next question, click with different waveforms can have the same PE SPL, A true, B false. Click A and click B have different base to peak sound pressure levels and different waveforms but similar peak to peak amplitude and similar peak equivalent sound pressure level. The peak to peak amplitude of the continuous tone and the click are the same. The reason that click peak to peak amplitude is not used despite the fact that it is the same as the pure tone peak to peak amplitude is twofold. One is that brief sounds such as clicks are hard to measure with most equipment often used in the medical evoke potential lab. So to go around this difficulty, visual comparison between peak and peak to peak of clicks and pure tones are matched by looking at the oscilloscope and then a long sound that is a pure tone sound is used in order to measure it. The second reason explains why not to make direct comparison between peak to peak amplitude of the click and pure tone once the amplitude of both are measured and the explanation I think it is that root mean square values correlate better with energy content of waves than do peak to peak values. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. Zero dB NHL for click occurs at approximately dash dB PESPL A10, B20, C30, D10. This abstract is from an often quoted paper. In this study, 40 normal young adults were used as control. The average hearing threshold was expressed in three different units, peak dB, peak equivalent dB, and a unit called SPL1MS. The hearing threshold expressed using dB peak SPL was 36 0.4 dB. This was probably done by using an oscilloscope to determine the click peak-to-peak -peak value 
matching its amplitude with the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of a pure tone, and then using a sound meter to measure the amplitude of the pure tone. The hearing threshold expressed using peak equivalent SPL units was 29.9 dB. It was likely to have been measured by monitoring the output of a sound level meter in an oscilloscope, recording the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of the tallest wave in the produced by the click, then adjusting a continuous tone to have an equivalent amplitude, and then measuring the sound pressure level of the continuous tone of similar peak-to-peak -peak values, which was then calculated by using the root mean square for pure tone. The threshold expressed using SPL1 was 25.6 dB. These findings were quoted in an influential paper by the American Speech-Language Hearing Association. And the quote used by them was that 0 dB NHL occurred at approximately 30 dB PE SPL. Interestingly enough, as you can see here highlighted, I think the number that less led to this statement present in the paper that I previously mentioned is here highlighted in aqua. In the same article, the confusion regarding the nomenclature is, was also expressed, as you can see in this uh, paragraph that I have just added. It says that the intensity of a click is frequently reported in DB NHL which is the number of decibel above the behavioral threshold of a group of normal listeners. Note, this measure has been referred to, to with variability in the literature, such as NHL, HL, NSL, or SL. So the answer to this question is 30. C. Next question. Corin being a vocal auditory potential machine calculate peak equivalent sound pressure automatically. A true, B false. In most evoke potential machines, all sound related parameters are in the primary two bar. You have a choice of using click, tones, or two types of PIP. For brain stem auditory evoke, we use clicks. The possibility of selecting frequency is only available for tones and pips because we do not to, we do not need to do that for clicks. The panel gives you an option to use NHL or SPL. NHL is determined by the manufacturer. It is given the value of 0 dB. It corresponds to the average of the softest sound heard by normal hearing controls tested by the manufacturer. SPL is an approximation of the peak equivalent sound pressure level and it is obtained by adding 33 dB to the normal hearing level. The loudness of a sound coming out of the microphone or ear insert is the sum of the set intensity of the stimulus and the threshold level. In this case, it is 70 dB because the intensity of the stimulus is 70 dB and the behavioral threshold is kept at zero. If the intensity of the stimulus is 70 and the behavioral threshold is 10 dB, then the total stimulus will be 80 dB. The field I have just indicated sets the different masking sound. This field has a number of 30 dB, reflecting the usual attenuation factor of the cranial vault. That is how much energy the non-stimulated cochlea gets when the ear is, that is when the opposite ear is stimulated. So the answer to this question is A. Next question, what is the maximal intensity of sound that can be used for evaluation of acoustic pathways? A, 130 dB SPL, B, 100 dB SPL, 
C 90 dB SPL, D 80 dB PE SPL. In this frame I have included the recommendations as far as the maximal sound that should be used provided in Chiapas book. In general, we can say that no more than 130 dB PSPL should be allowed if it is sustained, because at that, at an amount of more than 130 dB, if sustained, will be dangerous. From 130 to 105 dB SPL is probably safe for short duration, and 105 dB PSPL is safe regardless of duration. Frequency of the sound does not, as a general rule, influence safety. Remember that initially the frequency corresponding to the softest heard sound was considered to be 1000, but now it is considered to be 3000. So the answer to this question is A. Next question. If we assume 0 dB HL to be 20 dB SPL, then when stimulating an ear with 60 dB SPL clicks, the actual energy content of the click is dash above hearing level A, 60, B, 40, C, 20, D, 120. D, B, NHL is the number of decibel above when a sound is first heard by a group of normal listeners. The question and the reason for the variable terms used in the literature is likely to be the lack of a specification as to where the testing is being done. The testing can potentially have been done at a large organization, by the manufacturer of the machine, or by the lab actually doing the test. I used to like to use the term DB NHL when the threshold was obtained in the lab conducting the test to make sure that the local factors were considered developing the controls. So you will get at least 10 H-match controls with normal hearing confirmed by ENT doctors and then test them in order to develop the controls. This is no longer the case and now NHL SPE is given by the manufacturer of the machine. So unless stated in the manual, the correlation between DB NHL and DB SPL would never be known. So in the question at hand, which I model based on an example used in the clinical neurophysiology primer, click given was 60 dB SPL hearing level and the 0 dB is assumed to be 20 dB hearing level, so the actual energy intensity that the patient is getting is 40 dB SPL above the hearing level of the control. Remember the definition of dB NHL, number of decibel above the behavioral threshold of a group of normal listeners. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. If we establish the hearing threshold of one ear to be 30 dB SPL HL and a 60 dB SPL HL click is used, then the actual energy content of the click is dash above the sensory level of that ear. A 20, B 40, C 60, D 90. DSL or decibel of sensory level indicates the hearing level of each ear. Each ear has its own sensory level. If the softest sound an ear can hear is 30 dB SPL, then 30 dB becomes 0 dB for that ear. And when you stimulate with 70 dB SPL, the actual energy content of the click that reaches the cochlea is assumed to be 40 dB SPL. 
So the answer to this question is 40. B. Next question. If we establish the hearing threshold of one ear to be 30 dB SPL NHL and a 60 dB SPL HL click is used, then the actual energy content of the click is dash above the sensory level of that ear. A 20, B 30, C 60, D unknown. And the answer is unknown because you were not given the value of the NHL. 0 dB SPL is 20 micropascals. At times, the letter HL for hearing level are added to it without changing its words. So when you see 0 dB SPL HL, it's also 20 micropascals. I have represented in this frame the values in the pressure frequency graph that I have shown you in the past. Notice that the arrow is pointing to 0 dB, which is, which is equal to 20 micro pascals. Adding the term PE to SPL, so it would be 0 dB PE SPL HL. corresponds to adding about 30 dB. Thirty dB is the conversion value used by the American Speech Language Hearing Association Society based on Staples papers, which is about 630 pascals. So 30 dB, which is now the conversion ratio from NHL to SPL in most equipment, in the one that we have in our office is actually 33, comes out to be a 630 micropascals. You can see that indicated again in the pressure frequency chart or graph. But when the N is added in front of the NHL, then 0 dB corresponds to the threshold of the control tested, which is usually unknown, except if done in your own lab or found in the equipment manual of the machine you're using. So the answer to this question is unknown. Next question, if the stimulus intensity is set at 80 dB and the difference masking is set at 30 dB, the masking level will be dash dB, A 30, B 50, C 80, D 40. Here, the stimulus intensity is set at 80 and the differential masking is set at 30 dB. Hence, the masking level will be 50 dB. The Academy recommends that the white noise be set at 60 dB. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. Stimulation during brain auditory evoke potential should start at 30 dB PE SPL and proceed at progressively higher intensities. A true, B false. This paragraph is from, from the 9C guidelines of the American Academy of Clinical Neurophysiology and their recommendations are for adults to start with 120 dB PESPL and progressively go down. So the answer to this question is false. Thank you very much for your attention.